Hi everyone, um, thanks for checking out this video. So this is gonna be a video where I'm gonna um, give you guys a quick lesson on how to make something um, something cool that you might wanna add uh, to your personal website if you have one. Um, so this is something I, I recently added to my, uh, my own personal website. It's a um, job and professional history timeline. Um, and I thought this would be a cool thing to add because um, like my job history and my like education history and all that stuff is is a little bit uh, a little bit all over the place because I've done a lot of different things um, in the past like uh, I don't know ten years or so. So it's a little bit all over the place in terms of um, different positions, different like uh, schools I've attended, different things I've done. So I thought adding a timeline like this would be a cool way to kind of uh, visualize it all in one picture. So yeah, today I'm just going to be teaching you guys how to make uh, something like this using uh, the matplotlib library in Python, in case you want to make it for yourself. Um, okay, so this is mine. Um, it starts with high school, and then it shows like a part-time job I had in high school, and then college, and then some like um, some various jobs I've had, and then my time in the Coast Guard, and then uh, grad school, and then finally my current job. But this is a bit too complicated for today's video, so... I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this like simpler version and then you can um after you learn how to make this you can then like edit it yourself and personalize it for your own uh, professional history so in this example it just starts with um some degree at some university and then uh like a volunteer position that you did maybe when you were in college and then um your first job at some company and then your second job at some different company so i'm going to show you guys how to make this today and then you can edit it to to kind of personalize it um, okay, so let's get started. So this is going to be using um, matplotlib. So we're going to import matplotlib.pyplotsplt. And then we're going to be using the, the matplotlib.dates, sm dates, and then um, also from date time, import date time. So in addition to like teaching guys how to make something cool that you might want to add to your uh, personal website or, um, I don't know, maybe your LinkedIn profile or something, uh, this is also going to be a good a good lesson just for practicing with matplotlib and like learning how to make something um, something cool and something somewhat unusual with it. It's like not just like a, a normal plot. Um, so yeah, it could be some good good matplotlib practice too. Uh, okay, so the first thing we're going to do, and I'm actually going to be I'm actually going to be um, a little bit lazy and just copy and paste in this part. Um, you're going to make a list of lists. Uh, where each each sub list within the w within the larger list is going to be um, one of your professional experiences. So we have this big list called experiences, and then it's a list of sub lists where each sub list is um, some string talking about what uh, what experience it is, and then the start date, and then the end date. And these dates can actually be in a couple different formats. You can kind of choose what format you want to use, but I'm just going to use um, I'm just going to use uh, year, month, and then day for now. And then you guys might be noticing this um, slash n in these uh, in these strings here. What that's doing is that's leaving um, that's leaving a, a a new line here. That's saying we want degree, comma, new line, university. That's what this um, slash n means here. So yeah, we have our, our first one. Um, I just called it job title two, a company two, uh, start date, end date. Um, yep, that's it. Um, second one, job title one, company one, uh, start date, end date, and then um, volunteering at some organization, start date, end date, and then degree, university, um, start date, end date. Um. I tried to put these kind of in chronological order just to just to kind of or sorry in reverse chronological order with the newest first and then going to the oldest but um they're going to we're going to resort them like that anyway so if if you if you mess up the order a bit it's actually going to be fine because we're going to explicitly um sort them anyway Oh uh, by the way guys sorry if my voice sounds a little weird today I'm kind of sniffling too that's just my allergies my allergies are like super bad right now but yeah, so just bear, bear with me here. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, um, we need to convert these, um, these strings into actual, um, into actual, like, uh, proper, proper date formats for mat matplotlib. So to do that, we're going to say, um, 
we're, we're gonna make a new list called uh, converted experiences, which is an empty list. And then um, for label start, uh, start date, end date in experiences. <clears throat> So that's just going to that's just going to iterate through every every item in this experiences list, and then just pull out um, the label start date and end date. It'll kind of it'll just make it easier for us and kind of do it automatically. And then I'm going to say um, start num equals. You know what? I was thinking about typing it all out, but I'm actually just going to be a little bit lazy and just copy and paste here because it's it's kind of a lot. So I'm just going to copy and paste and then um, and then explain it. But yeah, so this is basically just just making it into a number that we can actually put on a matplotlib plot. So just to show you guys what this looks like, um, whoops, I actually wanted to make this, a, just to keep it consistent, We this was making it, um, I think the way I originally did it, I was using tuples here, but I decided to change that because I prefer just using lists. Um, could be could be a tuple too though. But um, yeah, so let's, let's try actually just printing out and seeing what these things um, actually look like. Yeah, so it might look a little bit weird, but that's okay because because basically it's just converting these dates into numbers that we can actually plot in matplotlib. And when we actually end up um, actually making the plot, you guys are going to see that's going to uh, turn out okay. Um, okay, so the next thing is to actually um, sort this uh, from from the most recent to the oldest. Um, and I kind of sort it this way just myself, just to help keep track of things. But um, we're also going to do this explicitly just to make sure. So we're going to say converted experiences dot sort key equals lambda x um, so basically saying we're, we're sorting by the index one element or the second element which is the start date we're sorting by the start date whoops um, and I'm going to say reverse equals true, so that we're going um, we're going from from newest to oldest. Uh, okay, so now we're ready to actually start um, making this plot. So we're going to say fig comma x equals um, plt dot subplots. Uh, can specify um, a size here. I'm going to say fig size equals um, fifteen by seven. Because I want it to be uh, like more wide than tall, basically. Um, but you guys can make this size um, whatever you want. But yeah, just defining uh, defining our figure to start, and then we need to um, we want to color code this. So in 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 my own, I actually color coded it so that the education was one color, um, the jobs were another color, and then the the other, which was volunteering and the Coast Guard, was a third color. Uh, so for us, um, we're just going to make it so that, yeah, the education is one color, volunteering is another color, and then the job, uh, the job title, I mean, sorry, just the, that the regular job is a, a third color. Um, okay, so you guys can make these whatever you want, but I like to make it um, look kind of nice. So I, I have this this kind of color scheme that, that I kind of like, kind of the, uh, the, lighter, the lighter colors, I guess. So I'm just going to say light blue... Um, light, oops, light blue, pale green, and light gray. And I just want to leave a comment here. This is going newest to oldest by start date. Yes, yeah, so that's why, um, you can see here it's like, yeah, the, the, newest two jobs are both um light blue here and then um yeah pale green and then light gray is the oldest one so there's yeah like reverse order here because we're, we're actually going to be kind of plotting it actually um yeah like that so yeah uh okay um next step we're going to say um for i comma uh label start end whoops sorry in enumerate 
uh, converted experiences. So if you guys haven't seen this enumerate before, this basically allows us to, to use a for loop to track the index red as well as the actual items. So you know, you guys know how you could say like for item in um, some, some list and that will just go through like the items. It'll give you like, like light blue, light blue, pale green, light green. Or you could say for um, like index in range when some list, and that'll give you numbers to use as the indices. Um, saying enumerate basically just allows you to do both. It lets you track um, the index with some, some I, and then it also lets you um, track the items. So here we're unpacking the items in each one into um, label, start, and end. So that's just that's just kind of uh, using a new range. It makes it a little bit easier. You guys could do this with like a regular for loop if you want. Just keep track of the index and then unpack everything manually. But um, yeah, new range kind of makes it easier to uh, to do that. So then we're going to say um, color equals colors i. And then the next part is a little bit complicated. So I'm actually just going to be a little bit lazy and copy and paste. Um, but yeah, this this is actually um, like plotting the actual bar itself. And yeah, setting the color, the edge color is gray. You guys could change this if you want to. And then we're setting the text within the bar. So we want to we want to set um, these uh, text blocks here. So we're doing that too, uh, centering it. Um, the font size, you guys can change that. Font weight, font name, color. You guys can like modify all these, customize them if you want. Um, but yeah. So let's, let's check in now and see what we have so far. So I'll say plt.show. And yeah, it's looking, it's looking um, okay. Um, it looks like kind of getting close to what we want, but it, it still looks a little bit weird. For one thing, um, yeah, you guys know like how, how I told you um, it's converting the, like Matt, Mapdollib's converting um, the date strings to actual numbers. Well, these are the actual numbers that it's uh, converting to. And then we have, um, yeah, on the on the y-axis, just some numbers. Um, so yeah, we, we wanna make some changes. We wanna like make it look a little bit nicer. Um, yeah, get it to look more like this, like an actual timeline. So um, it's looking, yeah, looking okay so far, but yeah, let's just, let's just try to actually make it look a little bit nicer. So the first thing, um, Again, gonna be a little bit lazy, copy and pasting here. We're gonna set the um, x-axis limits. So we're gonna specify um, where we want the timeline to start and where we want it to end. Um, so I'm gonna start it just in 2016, uh, January 1st, and I'm gonna end it 2024, um, June 1st. And if you guys are watching this in the future, we haven't arrived at that date yet. So basically I'm trying to, I'm trying to end it a little bit in the future so that, um, yeah, so it'll, it'll give us some space so that the timeline won't, like, immediately be out of date, like, you know, tomorrow or, or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, so let's, let's now try um, plotting and then seeing what we have now. Uh, okay, looking okay. Yep. Oh, and, I, yeah, I should have told you guys, if one of your jobs is, like, your present job, just um, make sure you have the end date be sometime in the future. I should have mentioned this earlier, but, yeah, I made the end date, like... If you want to have it look like it's in the present, have the end date be later than the cutoff of the timeline. So the cutoff here is June 1st. The end date here is July 1st. So that makes it look like we're currently working at that job, basically. Um, but yeah, looking good so far. Uh, yeah, so far, so good. Um, just another thing. Uh, X, um, X axis date. And yeah, uh, this is just going to convert the x-axis to um, actual dates, so we can uh, lt dot show. See where we're at so far. Yeah, so now we have the actual year. So now it's starting to look a little bit more like an actual timeline. So um, yeah, it's good. Just a couple more things to do here. Um, date format looks like it was already like this. It was already just showing the years, but um, I'll show you guys how to say it explicitly um, in case you want to have it be some kind of different format. So it looked, like it, looked, it looked like it was already like this by default, but I'm just going to say like, um, yeah, specify we only want the year for, for the date. 
and then x a dot x axis set uh major formatter um date format okay so far so good um just a couple more things to clean up i'm just going to copy and paste this block in this is just a little bit more uh cleaning things up making it look nice maybe leave a comment here cleaning things up comment what this is to like um setting and formatting dates uh, okay, yeah, so this is just removing, like, the, um, axis tick labels, and then, like, re removing the spine, um, making it look like a grid, um, yeah, rather than trying to explain to you guys, like, line by line, I'll just show you guys what kind of all of this does together and how it makes it look, um, kind of nice. Yeah, so now we have something that, that looks like, um, a pretty good timeline, I think. This is, this is something that you can put on your personal website and have it look, um, pretty nice and pretty like clean and professional and yeah like we said it does a good job of like communicating um communicating like the overall picture of your uh, professional history uh yeah so this this is good so now we want to um save this i'm going to show you guys the last step how to actually save this plot um we're going to see plt dot tight layout that just means we're not going to get any like too much extra white space when we're saving um when we're saving the image um and then plt dot save fig uh file name i'll just call it job history dot png um dpi equals 500 that's like the level of quality where higher is um a higher quality image but that'll also mean uh like it takes up more memory to save um yeah so uh should be good, I think. Let's just let's just check and make sure. Um, uh, okay, so if you guys want to try this code for yourself, I'm going to have it up on my GitHub. Um, I'll put a link in the uh, in the uh, description to where you can find it on GitHub. And um, yeah, it's just a quick video showing you guys something cool for your uh, for your LinkedIn profile or maybe your personal website cool way to um communicate your professional history and kind of have it all uh all in one picture um yeah if anyone has, has any questions just let me know in the comments and i'll try to answer them um and thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time